Hey, everybody. Hey. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, short webinar, and we will cover this material. I know you're busy in 30 minutes. Been invited by Angela. Angela, can you hear us? I can. Am I allowed? Oh, I can speak. Hi, I am. Hi, guys. Good to see everyone. Good to see you, too. So just wanted you to do kind of a brief introduction. You know both of us. And uh, then we're going to take it and run with it from there, Angela. Sounds great. Well, first of all, we are excited to have you both with us. David, thank you so much. You've been a great partner of PRO and in introducing us to Jerry. Um, we have a lot of members who um, are kind of confused about the ERC program and what yeah. they do and don't qualify for. Yep. So we're excited to have those questions answered today. I was just in another meeting with two companies who are logged on, um, Spectrum and Grossmuller. So hopefully we have several people showing up today and look forward to hearing what you have for us. And we will record this. I'll send you a link because this is what I've discovered, Angela, you're dead on, is people really not understanding how the employee retention credit works. And I just spoke with somebody earlier today and they said, well, we made too much money. Well, that's not the guiding principle. That's one element. The second element, and Jerry will talk about this, is a 10% disruption in service. And I don't know any contractor that didn't have service disrupted by COVID. And so Jerry is going to dive into this to really help people understand what they may qualify for. Uh, is there anything else you want to say, Angela, or should we jump in? Well, I have a question for Jerry. I need to understand what's the deal with the cool flag behind you, Jerry. Oh, the flag behind me. Uh, that is a friend of mine that is the artist. His name is Chris Justice. Um, his signature piece is uh, our, our flags. He does all types of media, but he does, um, th this is, like I said, his signature. This is actually on a balsa wood box that's got paper mache on it. It's got um, newspaper headlines uh, from the 07, 08 financial crisis. The flag had been torn, so um, it was okay for him to actually kind of paint over it. And so that's really what it is. And um, I just kind of love it. It's kind of a strong piece, I think. Very cool. I'll have to ask you more about Chris Justice later. I had a box mate in college, Chris Justice, and that's my maiden name. No kidding. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk offline. That's anyway, fun. all right, take us away, Jerry. Well, I just, a brief introduction. I'm a former general contractor. I've known Angela for a number of years. We've worked together. And when I learned about the employee retention credit, it was from one of the clients. I'm a coach working with them. And they called me and said, we just qualified for $52,000 through the employee retention credit. And I said, tell me more. And it was through that that I got to meet Jerry. So Jerry's an expert in the employee retention credit. And I said, Jerry, this applies to every general contractor. So basically, we're doing this so Jerry can take the next 25 or 30 minutes, review this. And at the end, we're going to open it up for questions. So we're going to go through the material, but I want you to know at the end, we will respond to every question that you post. Jerry, it's all yours. David, did you also want to mention about the uh, link that we're going to send out? Oh, yes. So at the end, we'll send out a link to the recording of the program if you want to share it. And secondly, there'll be a link that you can contact Omega Accounting to see if you do qualify. Jerry will briefly mention that here toward the end of the webinar. But I want you to know this is this is accessible and that through Omega Accounting, you have an opportunity to see if you do qualify. That will follow within 30 minutes of the program today. Great. Thank you, David. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time to learn a little bit more about ERC. There is a lot of confusion and misinformation uh, about the topic out there. So um, we're going to cover it today. Uh, as David said, we're going to run through it briefly. I'm going to try to get through this in about 25 minutes without rushing, but I just wanted uh, to let you know it's not going to be a long and drawn out process. Again, uh, to reiterate, if you have questions, please put them in the uh, uh, in the chat, I believe, or in the question and answer section. I'm not quite sure which one it is. 
Um, chat and, box. I'm sorry? In the chat box. In the chat box, and David will read those out to me uh, at the end. Uh, and there is no such thing as a stupid question, so any questions you have, please put them in there. All right, so let's start this. Very good. So we're going to cover several things today. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't really need to go through the agenda because uh, we'll just get into it. So uh, as uh, David mentioned, my name is Jerry Packer. I'm the Director of Business Development for Omega Accounting Solutions. We are an accounting firm that was founded in 2007, we're experts in tax credits. I just wanna stop right there. The reason that that is really important, and the, the first thing I start off with this is that we're founded in 2007, is because ERC is huge. The money is staggering. It is bigger than PPP. At least 1.5 times the size, uh, it's been estimated it could be up to two times the size of PPP. Um, this is the first time that small business has actually been able to take advantage of stimulus. The government has always had its stimulus money, uh, but it's always gone to large industries, such as the banking industry, the airlines, the automotive industry. I'm sure we all know about it, but this is the first time that business owners can actually take advantage of it. Um, because it is so big, there's been a lot of what we term pop-ups getting into the space. So people that have never done accounting before, that don't know anything about ERC, that are opening up companies. Uh, there, was a, there was a memo sent out by the um, IRS on October 19th that talked about this and basically buyer beware. So um, we are established. We've been around for a long time. We are experts in tax credits. We've been doing R&D credits for years. And because of that, we were uniquely positioned to handle ERC when the CARES Act came out. Now I'll get into that uh, a little later on. We're located in Irvine, California. Uh, we've earned the fastest growing private companies designation from the Orange County Business Journal, and we're also one of the top workplaces to work. Um, we also have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and zero complaints. Well, um, let me highlight what you just said, Jerry, is all these pop-ups because, you know, finding the money's available. And I'm gonna compare them to storm chasers. That honestly, I'm guessing some of the people on the webinar today, they've gotten random calls from people saying you qualify for this. There's more to this. I wanna introduce you again to Omega Accounting because they do know how to oversee and manage this application. So that is a foundation. Please make sure you're working with the correct company because of the exposure. You're working with the IRS. So right. let me give it back to you, Jerry. Thank you, David. And listen, we're not saying you have to go with Omega. Um, we would like you to come with Omega, but what, what I am recommending is if you talk to a provider, number one, ask them how long they've been in business, uh, and two, ask them what kind of backup material you're gonna get. And I'll get into that a little later on as well. I can tell you that the largest advertiser of ERC, the largest ERC provider that you've seen on Fox News, ESPN, you've heard them on the radio and all of that, um, has been in business less than two years. He was actually a client of ours before uh, he started his own company. So, a little background, ERC. When the pandemic hit, uh, the CARES Act came out. There was PPP and there was ERC. Nobody really heard about employee retention credits or ERC um, because everybody went the PPP route, which they should have. It was much more, um, to their advantage, there were more funds available, and plus, everybody would like to deal more with their banker than the IRS. So, um, uh, so that's what happened, and, and you could not do w both of them at that time. When the CARES Act came out, you either could go the PPP route or you could go the ERC route. You could not do both. Uh, in the beginning of 2021, the, e, uh, the CARES Act was amended and several things changed about the ERC program. Number one was, is that if you had received PPP funds, you could now apply for ERC. There were some other changes that were made in that amendment. Number two was the maximum number of employees, W-2 employees, I wanna stress this, that they have to be W-2 employees. So if you are 1099, uh, if you 1099 your, your people, uh, it's, you, they do not qualify for this. Um, the amount of people that, or the amount of employees that went up, it went from 100 to 500. Also, 
the amount of money that a business owner could get went up substantially. It went from $5,000 maximum per employee in 2020 to $21,000 uh, in 2021. So you might have heard on advertisements that you can you can get up to $26,000 per employee. That's actually combining 20 and 21. It, it can happen. Um, there are people that actually do qualify. I will tell you, not many. So if you talk to a provider and they say, oh yeah, you'll qualify for $26,000. They haven't even looked at your, your, your records and all of the things that we require then I would say that's a red flag. Um, we consider a full-time equivalent 130 hours for uh, the um, for qualifying of ERC, and that only has to do with the maximum number of employees. So I don't think any of you have either 100 or uh, over or 500. So that might not come into play. In order to max out per quarter, your employees have to make uh, approximately $20 an hour or $10,000 per quarter in wages. And if you own more than one business, we add those together, uh, which can be a benefit because of the fact that if one business doesn't qualify, the other one does, they both qualify by default. So as David kind of mentioned in the beginning, there are two ways to qualify for ERC. The most known way to qualify is a decrease in revenue or as the IRS terms it gross receipts. Uh, in 2020, on a per quarter basis, so let's say quarter two in 2020 compared to quarter two in 2019, 2019 always being used as the baseline, you had to show a drop of 50% in revenue compared to that same quarter in 2019. Same for quarter three and quarter four and quarter one in 2020. Uh, one of the amendments that or one of the changes that was made in the amendment of uh, the beginning of 21 was that they dropped the threshold as far as the reduction in revenue for 2021. So it only had to be a drop of 20% compared to 2019. Again, that's per quarter. So that'd be Q1 of 2021 compared to Q1 of 2019, Q1 of 20. Uh, Q2 of 21 compared to 19 and, and Q3. There is no Q4. That was dropped as part of the infrastructure bill to help pay for that. Now, if you do a back of the envelope calculation, you might say, well, I don't qualify. There are additional methods to that, that the government gives us that we can calculate uh, your revenue drop. That is not a standard, it's, um, standard calculation compared to what I just told you. So it's what, it's what we call the alternative quarter election rule. So you can actually use Q4 of 2020 um, and Q1 of 2021. So it gets a little complicated. My point is that we have ways to actually potentially qualify you that you might not know of if you're doing a back of the envelope and you say, well, I didn't drop 20%. So. All right, the next path to qualify has absolutely nothing to do with revenue. Your business could double or triple, and you could still qualify using this path that I'm about to explain. The government turns the second path full or partial suspension. I believe that's very misleading as far as the way that those words are, are used because. You don't have to fully or partially suspend your operation to qualify for this. What it means is, were your business operations affected nominally by 10% or more? So that would mean social distancing on the job site, uh, reduced number of workers, um, supply chain interruptions. You might have heard and seen on the news uh, we're here in Southern California, the largest port in the country. Uh, at one point, there were 109 container ships off of our coast here. They were slowed down or they were backed up due to the slowdown at the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach uh, due to social distancing. So if you if your suppliers were had goods that were held up on one of those container ships and 
that actually affected you and your production time and whatnot, then that could qualify you for ERC. Other things that might have affected that that might have uh, you might have experienced are, you know, you mean it. I can't even say it, municipalities um, shutting down. So for instance, uh, applications uh, for permits, um, inspections, things like that. So if you experience delays that might have um, interrupted your production times, uh, you could potentially qualify. So what we'll do is, is we're actually gonna do a case study and we're gonna say, we're gonna look for some historical data from you. We're gonna say this project or project like this normally took you for discussion purposes, 120 days. But because of either labor shortages, uh, reduced workforce uh, on the job site, um, supply chain interruptions, that 120 days went into 180 days or 240 days. Well, that's more than a 10% disruption. So we could qualify you on that. I want to point, yet yeah, the key point in this, Jerry, I don't know any building contractor that wasn't affected and didn't have a disruption of service. So yeah, locally, a, a, a building department, you couldn't go in and apply for permits. The permit process was delayed. You couldn't schedule inspections because people wouldn't come into a home. Homeowners saying, I don't want certain things happening. I'm gonna postpone. That may not, that wasn't government mandated, was it? A homeowner that, saying- That's correct. That is correct. So somebody wanting to just say, hey, I don't want you coming in, that's not tied to a mandate, so that wouldn't qualify. But there are several things that would qualify. And, and we're also going to look at um, one of the things in the impact study is, is that we, we pull all of the state that you're in, state um, and federal, state and local uh, mandates that were put in place at the time. So we're going to actually take your unique situation into account and, and use that when we're doing the impact study for you. So you'll guide people through this because basically most contractors, their revenue wasn't affected, but the disruption of service was. So they can do a quick call with you and we'll come up with this in about 10 minutes. And basically then you'll give them what information you need to create that narrative. That is correct. Well, they're not going to create the narrative. We're going to create the narrative. We're going to create it. That's we're right. going to do all the work. So what we're going to do, though, is we know the questions to ask. So um, moving on, there are um, bottom line is if you've got PPP, it does not disqualify you from um, from from applying for ERC. Um, so, and that leads us to some common misconceptions like David was talking about. Uh, and you talk to somebody and they said, well, you know, our business was up, so we don't believe we qualify. That is, in fact, not a disqualifier. We received PPP funds, as I mentioned. We That is not a disqualifier. And also, we were deemed essential, which I'm sure a lot of you were, and we didn't shut down. We don't qualify. That, again, is not a disqualifier. You could have doubled your business. You could have received PPP funds. You could have never shut down, and you can still qualify. Um, our process, we ask for a refundable retainer or deposit to start the process. If you wanna move forward, we will uh, send you a, a client service agreement, which is a contract, you can read it over and then you will sign that electronically, kind of like a DocuSign, and then you'll be able to pay your refundable deposit or retainer. Now, what do we mean by refundable? There's absolutely no risk. If once we go through the process, if we determine that you do not qualify for this, we give you 100% of your retainer or deposit back. So again, there is no risk. Why do we do this? We do this so you have skin in the game. So when we say we need these documents, you get them to us quickly. So we're not making 17 calls to try to get the documents. We do this so if we have questions and we call, we get answers. And we do this so in case we have other questions, we have to send you an email to our emails. Their email, we get responses. We found that there is no money placed on it, there's no value placed on it, and it gets put on the back burner. So we we want to work efficiently and effectively. So if we're making 
17 calls were not working effectively and efficiently. Well, and let me so, create a comparison. Um, I want to create a comparison that this audience will appreciate. We don't do free estimates because if we're contacting multiple trade contractors, it, it is in, it, it required that if I'm putting time in that a homeowner puts some money in to basically pay for our time. So to me, this is much like a design agreement. Except there's pay. one difference, David. We give the money back, they don't go with us. Or that's, I mean, let me, no, let me say that again. We give the money back and they don't qualify. In your case, if I'm not mistaken, if you give an estimate and they don't go with it, they don't get their money back. I think that in most cases, that's true. Okay, so again, there is absolutely no risk. And I would say it's absolutely worth a 10 minute conversation with one of my uh, uh, consultants. So we, we get the, 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 the refundable retainer or deposit. At the end of the process is when you actually pay us. So if you have 10 or more W2 employees, you'll pay 15% of a 50% fee of the credit that you receive. So. If we get you $100,000 and you have 10 or more employees, W-2 employees, you will pay us $15,000 and we will credit you the amount that if you paid $750, you're gonna pay us $14,250 when you receive your money from the government. If you have five to nine employees, you're gonna pay us 25%. And the reason is because we really don't make any money, but we want to accommodate our referral partners such as David and, and, and whatnot. So, we are um, we are accommodating, but we're really not making any money. And you know, we try to be smart business people. You don't want to do a job where you're going to lose money. We don't want to do a job where we lose money. And we just can't make any money with less than five employees because the the uh, credit that the maximum credit that we can get still is not going to pay at 25%. Is still not going to pay our our costs. Now, when we're talking about number of employees, I want to point out a few things. Owners that are that W-2 themselves are not included. Family own or family members of owners. So family members that work with you, spouses, uh, siblings, whatnot. If they are W-2, they don't go into the equation. So if you know there are 10 of you and two of you are owners, it really only counts as eight, and also your wages are not included in the calculation. That is uh, not our rule. That's the IRS's rule. So it is. It is an employee retention credit. No owners. No relative of owners. No 1099. They must be W9 employees. Correct. W2. W. Sorry. <laughs> w the W9 is what we send out. So that's okay. correct. Um, so it sounds like it may be daunting in, in order to do this. It truly is not. We do all the heavy lifting. Uh, chances are you work with a, a, a um, bookkeeper or a CPA or an accountant. Um, they can probably provide you with most of the information that we need. So what do we need? We need p by quarter for 2019, 2020, and 2021. If you use QuickBooks, this is extremely simple. It can be done in less than 10 or 15 minutes. We need payroll reports. For 20 and 21, if you offer um, healthcare, we need the monthly healthcare statements for 20 and 21, and that is actually going to help you because the amount that you pay for your employees if you offer healthcare counts as wages, and that will up the credit amount that you actually get back if you qualify. And lastly, we need your PPP forgiveness applications for one and two, and the reason is is because we have to back out the amount that you got. Uh, for PPP, so there is no double dipping. So, if we qualify you for, if we determine that we qualify you uh, for that, we will file the 941X, which is your revised 941, and then anywhere from six to nine months, you will get a check from the Department of Treasury. You'll get a check for each quarter. Um, oh, no. all three, uh, you, 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 the screen's freezing. Uh, if we you do not qualify, we will 
uh, give you 100% of your retainer. David? David? Yeah, your screen is freezing here a little. Okay, you know what? Let me turn my camera off and see if that helps. All right, good, okay. good, 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 good. So, so yeah, kind of repeat that last step if you could, please. Okay. Sure, and I apologize uh, for the technical difficulties. So, once we qualify you, we will we will file the 941X, which is your revised 941, which is your payroll uh, report. So, for the payroll taxes, um, you will get a check for each quarter filed from the Department of Treasury. So if we qualify you for three quarters, you'll get three checks from the Department of Treasury. Uh, anywhere from six to nine months, because the government, as I'm sure you can believe, is incredibly backed up. Last I heard, there were 10 million parcels that the government was, or that the IRS was get, uh, still needing to get through. This is not done electronically, it's done through hard copy. Um, if, if we cannot qualify you, as I mentioned before, you get 100% of your retainer or deposit back. Uh, let's see, what else? So our responsibilities are the document collection, which we will work with you on. When you sign your agreement and we get the, the, your, your refundable retainer, uh, you're assigned a, a case manager. That case manager will be your single point of contact through the entire process. So he or she will be there to answer any questions, to call or email with any questions we may have, um, but they are your single point of contact, so you're not gonna be bouncing all over the place. We then do the calculations. If you don't qualify on revenue alone, we go into an impact study, which is like a, middle, a mini R&D study where we are going to build a narrative. Um, we are gonna complete and file the ERC application and file the 941s. Uh, at the end of the process, we are going to, and when you pay us your money, uh, or actually our money at the end, when you've been given your money from the IRS, we will then provide you with all the backup documentation. Why is that important? It's very important, and this is really where the, the bad actors can take advantage of business owners. The IRS is not approving or denying these applications. They are processing them. Scary. They're doing the audits on the back end, not the front end. What does that mean? It means that a business owner might use a um, less than ethical ERC provider. That provider tells them, oh, you, you qualify for $26,000 for all your employees, sign here, we'll file it. The business owner gets a million dollars, let's say, they paid their ERC provider whatever percentage they charged, Three or four years later, there is a notice in the mail from the IRS that says, we'd like to review your uh, ERC application. Please provide us the, doc the backup documentation. Chances are, with most of those providers, you're not gonna have backup information. We're gonna give you an audit protection package that gives you all of the information. You can literally hand that to the IRS. Um, and, and I will say, um, I said before, if we can qualify you, we don't qualify everybody. We qualify about 85% of the businesses that we deal with, uh, which should be reassuring to you. It can be disappointing at times because a business owner doesn't want to hear that. But we also don't want to qualify. We, we don't want to get you in trouble and we don't want to get in trouble. We believe that once the audits start, the IRS is going to um, develop, they're going to see a pattern of what, IR, what ERC providers um, applications or preparations are troublesome and I believe we believe that they're actually going to start then singling those out so we don't want to have a problem with the IRS we don't want you to have a problem with the IRS so we'll be straight with you if we can we can qualify you you can believe that we sure will but if we can't we'll be we'll be 100% honest with you and tell you that now you might find somebody that will say we'll qualify you I would be scared the timelines it takes us anywhere from two to four uh, two to six weeks, excuse me, two to six weeks to go through the process once we get all the documentation. After that, we we, we do the filing and then it wait. Then you you wait the, the six to nine months to get the uh, the ref your your check from the IRS. I might add that we also have a division called Omega Funding Solutions. So for anybody who wants their funds sooner, we can get you 65% of the credit 
uh, within five day five days um, of the time that you actually tell us that you would like to get your money in advance. So there is a fee for that. We'll get you over to the person that handles the the lending, um, and they can talk to you that. But we won't discuss any of that until we can actually this, until we determine that we can qualify you or not. But there is that option. So I think that that's probably about 27 minutes of my talking, maybe 25. So, David, let's open it up to questions, if you don't mind. All right. I'm going to make one final point to compliment, you know, the audit package you put together. So you really do document the paper trail. And I want attendees to know, yes, you'll put some time in to put that document package together. I'm just going to say maybe it takes two to four hours and I'm just making up a number. But I want you to know that due to this disruption of service clause, this element of the CARES Act, it's found money and this money was put aside for those companies that kept employees working. So I just, I can't emphasize enough, you know, going through, and I'm gonna send you a link to Contact Omega. It's what, a 15 or 20 minute conversation, Jerry? To kind of go through? 10 to 12, maybe, 10 to 12. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I, look, I'm in at contracting. I'm always gonna give you a higher estimate because if I do it in less than that, I come out like a hero. Well, you do. And uh, I would like to add that this is, this is a refund for wages, as David said before, this is a refund for wages that you paid your employees to keep them employed during the pandemic. This money has been set aside for this very reason. Um, and it is a finite time window that this money is available. I would suggest uh, checking into it as soon as possible. Um, and David, to answer, or just to add on to something that you said earlier, there are, um, probably 10 to 20 hours that go into the impact studies. Uh, there's a lot of research that goes into it. Um, they are reviewed by CPA, by our in-house CPAs and uh, JDs, so attorneys. Um, so there's there's a whole lot of work by very Jerry, we've lost you. Okay, are you back? We lost you there for a minute. David. Can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. I've had problems like this before. I do not know what's going on. Maybe there's a All right. I can really, hear you. Really quickly. I can. Then, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, really real quickly. We're going to some questions here. But I wanted to confirm what Jerry said about getting a check per quarter. So I've worked with a contractor in Louisville, Kentucky. And he sent me an email about two weeks ago under the too good to be true. And he said, we have qualified for 71,000 in the first quarter of 2021 and 77,000 in the second quarter of 2021. So it's real. So let's go to the questions. And let me just kind of read hey, through these Jerry. for you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, do nonprofit do nonprofits qualify for the ERC? Absolutely. Good. Uh, is this credit only available to contractors or for any business? Any business. The uh, government estimates uh, 80 to 85% of all business, all small business owners out there qualify for this. All right. And I'm going to see if I can read this correctly. Is uh, Let's see. Do you count how many employees we have for fees and retainer? based on the period uh, affecting the credit or current amount. We recently hired four employees this week. Uh, would that change our classification? No, it has to do with how many employees you had. We're looking at your payroll report. So it has to do with the wages you paid during the quarters uh, that you can qualify for. So that would be Q1, 2, 3, and 4 of 20, and Q1, 2, and 3 of 21. Great. Uh, another question from Eric. Is the 15% fee based on the total amount gained via ERC? Yes. It's it, however much you get from the government. So if you get $100,000 in three different checks totaling $100,000, 
you're going to pay us 15% of that, which is $15,000. Oh, and here's a great one from Rob. Are there any restrictions on how you can use the money? Rob, great question. No, you won't get on the news for buying a Lamborghini um, like they did with PPP and go to jail. Um, there are no restrictions. This is your money. It is not a loan. It does not have to be forgiven. <laughs> that, that one made me smile. Uh, when do you foresee the program ending? I can tell you when it ends. You have three years to file each quarter from the time that you filed. So essentially, the first quarter starts to close. The deadline for the first quarter is at the end of the first quarter of 23. So filing now makes, makes sense. I wanna, I wanna make one thing. The program doesn't actually end as far as like the third quarter of, of 2021 does not end. And the last day to file is the, the end of the third quarter of 2024. But here's the thing. Congress can change it just as they amended it in the beginning of 2021. They can, especially with a uh, potentially a new Congress coming in, this can change at any time. My suggestion would be to jump on it quicker or sooner as opposed to later, because it can change. Good point. And next question from Rob, how soon can I meet with one of your reps? And we are sending you a follow-up email with not only a recording of this program, but a link to contact Omega Accounting. Right, Rob, so Rob, you're gonna get a link and it's going to ask you four or five pieces of information, your name, your company name, your email, your phone number, and the approximate number of employees you have. And then um, today you will receive a call from uh, one of my consultants. Terrific. Next question from Cindy. I understand that it may not be worth your time for less than five employees. Does that mean it's not worth it if you have three to four employees? I think that it is absolutely worth it, Cindy. I think that you should, uh, most accountants don't want to do this, or most CPAs don't want to do it. They've been dealing with forgiveness. They've got taxes. They don't have the bandwidth. Um, I would call your CPA and see if they can do it for you. Uh, and, I'd be, and I think that my statement is probably correct by the fact that I would be willing to bet that your CPAs did not contact you about this, or if they did, they told you right off the bat that if your income was up, they did not, or that you didn't qualify, which is, is not correct. So if, if Cindy has four employees, she should still um, contact you. You'll still process the application? Does Cindy have four employees, not including ownership? Um, I just have, does it mean it's not worth it if you just have three to four employees? That Cindy, was your question. Cindy, fill out the form. We'll contact you and, and we will work with you. And Cindy says, I have three employees. She just posted that. So oh, yeah. you're, you're saying you will go ahead and, and have that follow-up conversation to move forward. We'll absolutely have the follow-up conversation. Good. Uh, and that's an, a related question from uh, Verl is any advice for companies with less than five employees? I would talk, again, I would talk to your, I, I would talk to your accountant as well, or your, your CPA is what I would do. But, but really encouraging them still to follow up with you just to go through the, the qualifying call? Yeah, I think that they should. I think that we would, um, I think that we'd be able to give them a good idea with some of the questions we're asking, uh, whether it's even worth contacting uh, their CPA. Good. And, and so you're that resource because your point that you just made, Jerry, is accountants, I've discovered, they don't always understand the ERC credit. And so you're kind of going to be an advisor to the potential contractor, giving information, helping their CPA. Well, you'll submit the application, but you're there to answer questions that might come up. Correct. Right. Um, I think that's all the questions. Wonderful. Hey, listen, I really apologize for the um, the technical difficulties or our weak bandwidth. Um, I never had that issue before, and um, I do apologize. 
Uh, I've got one remaining question here from Eric. Do part-time employees count? Can you review what what which quality which employees do qualify for the credit? Part-time employees do count. Uh, wages towards part-time employees do count as long as they're W-2 employees. Okay. I think that's every question. Wonderful. Well, thank so, you again for taking the time. I greatly appreciate it. As David said, you will be getting uh, a link and or an email in the next 30 minutes. Um, and, you know, please feel free to click on the link and, uh, and fill out your information and we will reach out. And if you need to contact me, you know, my contact information uh, will be, you know, in the email. So you're welcome to follow up with me and I'll assist you in any way that I can. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Jerry, thank you. Great job, that was perfect. Good, thank you, Angela. It looks like uh, Jerry jumped off. So okay. uh, we will speak soon, Angela. I'll yeah, follow up. it was very informative and he did a good job of helping people understand what's out there, why it's out there, and why they should choose a reputable company versus just some of these pop-ups that you're seeing all the time right now. It's like the chuck in a truck. We don't want to it's chuck in exactly a truck. exactly like chuck in a truck, making promises they can't keep. Right, and just got in it because, oh, all of a sudden there's a, a boom, let me start doing some construction or remodeling. Okay, well have a great day. I look forward to seeing how many of our members, and. I do think, David, um, what I'm thinking about, I'll probably run by some of the points that I think are most important, or if you and Jerry could give me some. What comes to mind for me is, did you know you could have taken advantage of the PPP and now are also, could also be eligible for ERC? Yes. Um, you don't, you could have um, uh, made a, like increase your sales, I don't know how to say this, you could have been even more profitable during this time, yet if you had some sort of interruption in service, even if you were in an area that wasn't, um, what is it called, uh, uh, essential. Even if you were in an area where construction or remodeling was essential, even if you made money or increase your um, revenue. revenue during this time period, if you if we can show some sort of interruption in yes. service, permitting or anything like that, you could qualify. And, and that's the key point. I don't know any contractor that didn't have a disruption of service. And I, will, I can mention that too. So I think those might be the points that I use when I follow up with people to, to share the recording and encourage them to just take a look. look. And it was like all of what, 25 minute presentation? Yeah, and, and the whole point is then Omega will create that narrative um, documenting that disruption. So they'll show you, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll create that narrative and show you how to provide the supporting information so they can submit for that credit. And they do the heavy lifting. They they charge a nominal deposit, kind of like we do a design agreement, yep. just to make sure you have skin in the game, you're getting back to them in a timely fashion so they're not wasting their time. If you don't qualify, you get that 100% of that back. If you do qualify, um, you will they will apply that toward what uh, their fees. Is that correct? This, this, yes, so this is found money, Angela. Okay. And, and honestly, it can be six figures. Yeah. yeah. And and again, I, I just I'm hosting these probably once a month now mm -hmm. to really help contractors understand that Omega. And again, I reviewed some different companies, but I was impressed with them. Right. And they'll what, guide you through this process. What NARI chapters have you been able to get a hold of? Can I help you connect with those folks? Uh, you sure can. I, who you're the, you are already you're, connected with? What's that? Who have you connected with any Nary chapters at this point? No. Really? Okay. All right. I'll work on that. All I'll, right. I'll, okay. Cool. All right. Well, very good. Thank you, David. I appreciate you bringing this to to us. It, I think our members 
will find it very helpful, you know. The email will be coming shortly from Mitchell Fuller Fullerton, who I work with. He kind of handles all the details. I know Mitchell. And Mitchell just finished Mitchell? our last webinar series. Yeah. <laughs> So, I actually just met with a client of Mitchell's who wanted to show me and Cindy, who was on the call, um, their logo options that uh, Kiyoki has done. And he could not be more pleased with their work and their process. And really. he's elated. Good. Yeah. So awesome sauce. All right. I will catch you soon, sir. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming and joining us today. I appreciate it. Oh, sorry. I'm, I didn't realize everybody was still on. Keep talking. Bye. <laughs> okay. Take care, well, Angela. We'll talk soon. language less colorful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least we kept it clean. Yeah. Bye, David. See you later.